A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 52. Fabricating the saddle flank supports using nuts and bolts. In this episode, I show the right and wrong ways of marking out pieces of metal in order to obtain accurate hole spacings. Plus, there is some painting at the end. I was a bit concerned that the check valves would not unscrew from the boiler with the saddle tank in position, but I had a pleasant surprise. The design is really good because the check valves are at a different angle to normal. They are not at 90 degrees to the boiler, so they just unscrew perfectly. That's good. Thanks to the brilliant design of the check valves for this engine, it will save me a lot of time. I would never have thought of doing it that way. Normally, to me, check valves are always at 90 degrees. In this part of the clip, I'm applying some hydraulic sealant, and you can see that the inlet to the check valve is not at 90 degrees to the barrel. Here, using one of my larger Barco spanners, I'm applying a little pressure to the unit to screw it firmly into the boiler. And as you can see, there's plenty of clearance above the check valve, it's not going to touch the tank, so everything is good. Now what I need to do is make the mountings. The uprights are loosely mounted in place to the mounting bracket. The piece of brass is just a push fit across the top. Once I removed the piece of brass, I could then remove the upright part. And now, as you can see, the saddle tank is sat down on the top of the check valve. Over now to the workbench to start the process of fitting the pieces of brass to the pieces of steel. There are many ways I could fix this piece of brass angle to the top of the piece of steel. I could thread the brass and screw a bolt through from the other side. Or I could rivet the brass angle to the piece of steel. But I've decided to use nuts and bolts. 2BA nuts and bolts to be exact. From a strength point of view, I am sitting the brass angle on top of the piece of steel. And what you're seeing at the moment is the layout for the first of the uprights, the right hand side one. The first thing to do using my steel rule is to measure the length of the piece of brass and it is two and a half inches. I've drawn a line on the piece of brass at this point. The next thing to do is to measure from the centre to the outer edge and draw a line at the midway point here. I have to mention before any viewers write in this is a terrible way of doing the job. I am aware of it. I'm doing this for a reason. A much better way of doing this job would be to use my surface plate and a scribing block, but this way is quicker and it should be alright. In this clip I'm using a spring centre punch to centre mark when I'm going to drill the holes. But before I drilled the holes I double checked with the rule that the centre marks were in the right place. Now it's over to the drilling machine and I'm actually drilling the holes smaller than I need them to be. And in this episode, for initially drilling the holes, I am not using a centre drill. I'm using a smaller drill size than I actually need. Why is this, you may be thinking? Well, if I drill the hole slightly in the wrong place, I can correct the error using a needle file. And then, once all of the holes are in the right place, I can drill them using the correct size drill, which is 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter, clearance size 42BA. On larger drilling jobs, I do not hold the pieces of metal in my hand, but this is fairly safe. It's up against a mahogany block, so it would be very difficult for it to spin around and cause any injury to my person. This is not always the case, though. It's a better idea to mount it firmly in a machine vise. With the first three mounting holes drilled in the piece of brass angle, it's time to transfer these holes to the steel upright. And for this job, I'm using some steel blue layout fluid. Here it is, painted on the steel. All I have to do now is hold the piece of brass angle onto the steel plate and use a scriber through the holes like this to scratch the marking out fluid. I end up with a nice neat ring, and here I'm showing what not to do. Using my spring centre punch, I've purposely put the centre pop marks in the wrong place inside the small rings you can see on the steel. The good news, when using a centre punch, you can easily correct the positions of the holes by re-punching with the punch held at a different angle. If you're a beginner to this sort of thing, try it on a scrap piece of metal and you'll see what I mean. 
On this piece of steel that you can see on screen, it was really easy to correct the error, and then I drilled the three holes. Now they look like this, and I'm cleaning up the area. The surfaces of all these parts need to be scratched. And if you don't do that, the surface of the steel will not be good for the paint, and in no time at all the paint will flake off, primer as well. Here's the box of bolts where I keep my 2BA large head bolts. And these are what I'm going to use to hold the uprights to the bracket and the brass part to the uprights. In this clip I put the bolts in the wrong way around on purpose just to show the evenness of the hole spacing. Originally I marked these parts left and right, but now it's not important. They are accurate enough to fit in either position. And at no time has there been any filing of these holes to correct them. Drilling holes in the right place in pieces of metal does demand a little bit of patience. The two holes that you can see in this piece of brass angle are going to be used to fasten the saddle tank to the top of the uprights. What I'm doing here is holding both of the brass parts together and marking through with my deep hole marker so I can drill the other brass part. Once again, this is not a very scientific method, but it's quick and it works, that's why I'm using it. Now I have a felt tip pen mark on the other piece of brass, and all I need to do is centre punch the very centre of the black spots. And after drilling the last two holes, I assembled both of the brackets, and here they are. These parts are identical, despite the bad marking out and dubious punching with the centre punch, as well as holding the part in my hand while I drilled the holes. Why do these parts look more or less identical? Well, the answer to that is, over many years I've had a lot of practice at drilling holes in bits of metal. Now the parts are complete, it's into the outer part of the workshop to apply a coat of etching primer. This is really good paint that etches into the steel. The chemical used does not etch into the brass, but it sticks to brass quite well. Here is the first of two shots of the paint drying. I left them for a while in this position, and I went back into the main workshop to do some other small jobs. About half an hour later, I returned, and as it's such a nice warm sunny day for a change, the parts were dry enough to turn them over, and here I'm spraying the other side. And now an extra special treat, and this isn't a freeze frame, this is the paint actually drying as you watch it, it's been filmed in real time. And if you watch it to the end, look at the right hand corner, you will see that it gets duller as time goes on. And when both of these parts are dull, then the paint is dry, and tomorrow I'll be able to give them a bit of a rub down, and then paint them with the top coat, which will be black. But that's enough excitement for one day, time for me to go. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.